Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I'm glad you're here. Real quick before we get started, just big thanks, big shout out to all my channel members. I appreciate y'all more than you know. And if you guys who aren't subscribed yet get a chance, please hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification icon. If you do that, I really appreciate it and I'll straighten out the screen. Anyway, sorry about that, guys. But honestly, thank you to all the channel members and thank you for all of y'all that subscribe. It really does help the channel. So today I want to talk about, whoops, hold on two seconds. I apologize, guys. I have forgotten I'm plagiarizing a knife as we speak. Tippy almost got in a frame. <clears throat> This knife is the Borka Blades um, SB1. It is on loan by from my local brother from another mother. A to Z EDC. Super good guy. Always goes to Blade Show with me. Please give him a follow on Instagram if you're not checking him out. He's got a great collection. And he's nice enough to throw blades my way that I don't have in my collection that I can experience for a week or two so I can give you a kind of an honest opinion, right? So the Borka Blades Production SB1, it is a amazing knife. It comes from the factory with a Kydex sheath with a tech lock system where you can mount it a lot of different ways. I was with A to Z when he picked this up in um nashville at the custom knife show and pick he picked this up they were also it was they were at the microtech booth for some reason um you guys probably know that or like duh but this company was also there this is chattanooga leatherworks and they make custom sheaths for the borka blades sb1 and he thought that was really cool i kind of agree i think it's a super cool sheath um, it's got great retention. Uh, you can clip it in your pocket. You could do it as a pocket dropper. You can run your belt through there. Yada, yada, yada. And it comes with the Kydex sheath. But we're not here to talk about the sheath. So, this is, at first glance, and the opinion, and the feeling, I guess, more so than the opinion that I have when I hold this knife and when I've been carrying this knife is... It is very much a tactical knife. It's very much a self-defense knife. Um, it's very much a, heaven forbid, slurpy saver knife. But even though it's thicker with this kind of dagger grind, which I'm probably mispronouncing that, it's kind of a spear point, uh, kind of daggery grind. This is not sharp enough at the top to swedge, but you've got this really pronounced um, poon that gives your thumb just nothing but stopping power along with that choil. So for a piercer, I think this is what this knife is kind of designed for. Let me grab a coupon. It is, however, for an EDC fixed blade, it is very slicey. It is very sharp. It is very up to any urban or I would say rural edc task that you're going to come into contact with right from cutting a sandwich to fire sticking to using a knife the way that we use knives this one just happens to be also very tactical and very pokey right so i'll, I'll say that about it i as you guys know or as i'll share with you now for an edc knife this is, even with the pocket dropper, I've noticed a little bit of a larger carry. <clears throat> I would put it up there in weight with my, um, my skur. Even though my skur is much shorter, <clears throat> it's a hefty knife, right? You feel it. When you carry it, you've kind of got to be carrying it with purpose. So this is not a knife that disappears in your pocket necessarily, but that doesn't really make it any less fun or enjoyable to carry it is a fantastic knife it is produced it's first of all designed 
by a fella, I'll get this name wrong, Sebastian Barini, um, who is, from my understanding, which is very limited, fork of blades, and he makes these knives as customs. Every now and then they go into a production phase. This is a production fork of blades, the production SB1. This one happens to be in M390 PVD coated with the PVD coated with black G10 handles. Uh, the OEM is Fox Knives, who produces this knife over in Italy um, for Borca blades. But that's why it is affordable, and affordable is very relative. I think this knife is somewhere around. 450 when I found it on the websites. I think table price when this was purchased by my buddy was somewhere closer to the 350 to 4 range. I could be wrong. But guys, it's a hunk of M390 that will never, and I apologize for the cat meow and I can't let it out this time of the night, but she's going to whine for a sec. But anyway, it's a very, very capable life. It is solid one thing that i know why these handles are narrow is because it is a tactical knife right it's designed to print very low to ride in your waistband or ride in your pocket i feel even with my medium-sized hand that even though it's comfortable i could use it for what this knife's meant to be used for i could use a little bit more oomph on the handles i would not mind if these handles were a little bit thicker, you know, maybe a quarter inch altogether thicker in your hand, I think that might feel a little better. But it could just be that what I'm used to in an EDC knife, what I'm used to holding handle wise, is different than what this tactical knife was designed for. But as we talk about that, let's get an idea for the size of the Borka Blades Production SV1. So I'm going to compare it with some knives that we'll start off with a couple of folders that most people have an idea of the size of. First being the Benchmade Bug Out. Second being the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. So it's much bigger than the Benchmade Bug Out. Right around the same size as the uh, Spyderco Paramilitary 2. I will measure this knife for you and get some more dimensions for it. But compared to some of the fixed blades that are in my collection, my SE3 in S35VN is a little bit shorter than the Borka. And my White River Small Game is considerably shorter than the Borka. There's really no reason to break out the um, the Guardian 3, but I will in case some of you guys have that knife and you don't have some of the other knives that I've shown. But the Guardian 3 is going to be considerably smarter, smaller than the Borka. The Borka is a mid-sized, good-sized knife, right? Very concealable, very uh, edc -able, but on the larger size. Again, a lot of that's going to be subjective depending on your size. But using my Javon's no-cost promotional tape measure that I stuck a sticker on, this knife comes in right around eight and a quarter inches overall. If I measure that blade, that's a four-inch, a little bit over a four-inch blade, right under four and a quarter inch blade. That handle is right around four and a quarter. So if I measure from this back lanyard area to this front finger choil, I've got I'll go from the front. We'll call that four inches. So we'll call this a solid four inches. So I feel that even if you've got really sausagey hands, not that there's anything wrong with that, but a much larger size hand than I do, I think this knife would probably lean on the size of being more comfortable for you than it is for me. You might not feel that narrow handle as much if you've got more meat in your hand, but again, I'm not complaining about that. I'm just pointing it out as something I notice that I don't notice on a lot of my other fixed blades. Um, one good example is this is an over exaggeration, but the skur is 
so big, overbuilt, that I have a very comfortable grip on it. And even though it's heavier and it'll give me a good forearm workout, the handle is, to me, more long-term comfortable than the, uh, the Borka blades, but that's not what this knife is designed for, right? So let's get an idea of the thickness of this blade stock. And I'm gonna measure it down here at the thickest point, which is 0.2. And then up here at the swedge, at about 0.1. It's thick behind the edge, but you saw how slicey it was. So right above that sharpening bevel, 0.03. And the handle, even though it feels thin, is a 0.57, guys. I would have gambled. That's why I don't gamble, but I would have gambled that that was less than half of an inch. And maybe it's because of the height of the handle. Maybe it's because of the balance of the knife, the heft of the knife. This knife balances right behind that finger choil there. So it's got great balance. I mean, it's very, very well designed, very well thought out. Is it my jam? Not necessarily. Do I like it? Do I think it's cool? Absolutely, 100%. And the weight of this guy is substantial, 6.7 ounces, which should come as no surprise because it is a full chunk of M390 um, with G10 uh, scales. But yeah, guys, that's kind of the, um, the Borka Blades SB1. Um, again, I went and looked came up with a couple of sites that didn't have it in stock but when it is in stock i think you can pick these up for right around 450 i was surprised to see them in other than just the dlc coated you can get them in a different coated blade or more of a non-coated blade i should say with micarta handles it is a great knife if this is the kind of knife that, that you're looking for for an edc knife again i'm looking for something a little more understated but that does not take away from the I think the elegance and the purpose of this knife and for the reason it was built. And with my channel kind of being about how knives make me feel, this knife is when I've carried it, I felt very equipped. Um, I don't think that you could be faced with a task, whether it's having to cut rubber off of a strap on the back of a pickup truck, to defending your Slurpee where this knife would not perform as well or better than any of the knives in my collection so i give it that it's got a pretty nice sharpening choil here you can see where that termination is right there um so you've got a few sharpenings i don't think you'll get much of a smile um so yeah and i don't think you'll need a lot of sharpenings either i think for what this knife's designed for um i think it'll hold an edge very well but guys i've rambled long enough that is the Borka Blades SB1, and this is a custom Borka Blade sheath made by Chicago or Chattanooga Leatherworks up in Chattanooga, Tennessee, if I'm not mistaken. That's their maker's mark right there. Guys, don't forget to give our buddy A to Z EDC a follow. He's kind enough to keep knives coming into the channel, which I appreciate. Channel members, I really appreciate you. Anyone who takes the time to come in and watch any of my videos, thank you. I appreciate you. I ask that you please look out for the guy or gal to your left. Please look out for the guy or gal to your right. Please look out for each other. Go forward with love in your heart. Choose debate, not hate. I love you all. Peace.